Let's start with the G7. Uh, from your vantage point, uh, did President Biden accomplish what he needed to? He certainly set a different tone, but it's more than just tone. I, I think it was essentially about uh, restoring the U.S. role as, uh, as a world leader. Uh, and it's a role that uh, the United States has had since the end of World War II, and it clearly is built on the strength of our alliances. And I think what uh, Joe Biden tried to do is to reaffirm our relationship with those alliances, whether it was Great Britain, whether it was the G7, whether it was NATO, uh, whether it was the European Union. Uh, I think it was very important uh, for President Biden to say to the rest of the world that the United States is there, uh, supports these alliances, uh, and believes that uh, we all have a role to play uh, in using these alliances, not only to deal with some of the threats from climate change, uh, as well as COVID, but also to provide security. So I, I think it I think it was an important message to send to the world. So he sent the message now, and he was not ambivalent in doing so. The question is, what does he need to do now to follow up? Because at some point, people will say, yeah, but what are we actually doing? What, from your point of view, would be the most important thing, concrete next step to take? Well, that's, that's going to be the test. It's not the words. It's going to be the actions, uh, particularly when it comes to the relationship with Putin. Uh, and Russia. I think it was important for the president uh, to lay out uh, where the red lines are. They seem to have had a pretty straightforward conversation uh, on those issues. But the real challenge is going to be whether or not the president uh, is willing to back up uh, that uh, threat with regards to the red line. If Russia does something that uh, President Biden has warned him against, I think it's going to be extremely important for the United States to take strong action to make clear that those really are red lines and not just a bluff. Well, it's an interesting point because I noted that uh, President Biden in his news conference afterwards said he gave a list, as I understand it, to President Putin of specific industries. They said, do not mess with these industries and infrastructure. So that is pretty much a red line, right? Now, if there's some hack from Russian soil uh, that we can identify that goes after those industries, President Biden almost has to do something, doesn't he? I don't think there's any question. Uh, you know, the, uh, the worst thing that could happen is that uh, if, if he doesn't stand by his word, uh, it's going to send a terrible message, uh, not, not just to our adversaries, but to our allies as well. And so if, in fact, uh, Russia, uh, through, uh, through the various criminal operations that are operating out of Russia, uh, if there is a ransom attack or a cyber attack against our vital infrastructure in this country, and the president has laid out what constitutes our vital infrastructure, if something like that happens, uh, there's no question in my mind that President Biden then has to make clear that we are going to take action against their infrastructure as well. That was certainly the nature of the threat uh, by saying very clearly, you have your pipelines as well that could be threatened by a cyber attack. Uh, he, he couldn't have made that plainer. So uh, a lot will depend on whether the president uh, does take strong action in light of what Russia tries to do. And as far as we could tell from the outside, it looked like President Biden didn't have much trouble getting the European allies to agree with respect to Russia. China might be a little trickier because there are, as you know so well, profound commercial relations, for example, between Germany and China. They have a somewhat different relationship to China. What should we be doing with respect to China that would bring the allies along? And let me give you a specific instance, this Wuhan laboratory question, which I saw that Jake Sullivan, the national security advisor, just over the weekend said China has got to come forward on that. Can we really make progress on that? I think in many ways, uh, the same approach to Russia uh, is the kind of approach that's important uh, for China, which basically means that the United States has to deal with both of them from a position of strength. Uh, I think for too long, uh, Russia and China both uh, have uh, seen weakness on the part of the United States and taken advantage of that. Uh, I think that it is important now to make clear that uh, that is no longer the case. And uh, the way you, you approach this from a position of strength uh, is essentially what 
the president did with regards to Russia, which is laying out the red lines. Uh, and I think he's got to do the same thing with China. There are red lines in the relationship with China uh, that uh, China cannot cross, whether it's dealing with the uh, South China Sea and the militarization of South China Sea, whether it's dealing with Taiwan, uh, whether it is uh, dealing with uh, trade uh, and freedom of the seas issues. There are a number of clear lines that the United States has to establish. Once we've done that, and once we've shown that we're going to maintain our power in the Pacific, if not enhance it, then I think you can have a dialogue. Hmm. It'll at least be based on an equal relationship uh, where the United States says, you know, these are the areas that uh, are important. I think Wuhan fit, fits into that. Uh, Wuhan is extremely important to be able to find out what the hell happened here with regards to COVID-19. We need to know just exactly how that happened in order to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And I think that's in China's interest, as well as the United States, as well as the rest of the world. So I think we ought to be very tough on that issue to make sure that we get their cooperation. Finally, Mr. Secretary, let's sneak in one, one more, which is Iran. They had the election yesterday of a new president who is a protege, a personal protege of the supreme leader there. Uh, from your point of view, does that make it more difficult to, to really get where we want to go, the United States wants to go in terms of a nuclear agreement? Or could it make it easier because now they have somebody who really is really joined at the hip, as it were, with the supreme leader? I think this may be a real opportunity. I mean, uh, it, it was a foregone conclusion that... Uh, he was going to win this election. Uh, I don't think there was any question, and he certainly won in an overwhelming way, although uh, there wasn't uh, that great a, a voter turnout in terms of the election itself. Uh, but uh, since that person did win, uh, and uh, considering his relationship to the Ayatollah, uh, I think uh, there is a very good chance that a hardliner uh, might be easier to deal with on trying to get back into the nuclear deal uh, than uh, someone who might be more moderate and would have a tougher time bringing the rest of the country and the IRGC along. So I, I think there is an opportunity here, and I hope that uh, we're able to take advantage of it.